Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. To Family Home Evening. With Bad Mormon. I'm Mandy. And I'm Charlotte. We're in an unusually chipper mood for considering what's... That everything is garbage. It's happening. Burn it down to the ground. <laughs> so we're drinking. Yep. I have a... This is called a 503 cocktail, the Wicked Mule. Um, it's imported from Fish Haven, Idaho. <laughs> Oh yes, mine's mine's uh, just a mango white claw imported from Logan, Utah. Mm. So I was shocked when I could find a five percent drink sold in grocery stores. Yeah, things are getting weird there, right? There was a sign at the gas station that said, it's "Coming soon, white claw seltzers." It's like what? It's like, what is this brave new Utah? Of course, where I bought this drink it was much like a Costco that it was large and it had you know. Kind of things in bulk, right? Winco? Winco. But yet they don't take credit <laughs> cards. And nowhere does it say anywhere they don't take credit <laughs> cards. It's cash or debit cards only. That was real weird. We we went to this place because, you know, we got a large family. We're heading to the cabin. We're on a family vacation, stocking up. And we got about a $500 shopping yeah, cart. Yeah, sounds about right. No booze, by the way, which is shocking. Yeah. Like, I'm used to a $500 thing when we've got a lot of wine, <laughs> but zero alcohol included. Yeah. And yeah, get up there and they're like, oh, we don't take credit cards. It's like, well, shouldn't you put the, a sign at the door or something? Right, because in what fucking universe do you not take a credit card? <laughs> like, I just, it's the cost of doing business. Luckily, I had some cash on me. Uh, Tiffany had a debit card, so game on. But me Same and Mandy thing. don't have debit cards. Mm. Fuck that shit. I don't want access to my my bank accounts. Mm-mm. So yeah. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to well. Jesus. Well, listen. <laughs> cheers to getting off of our asses and getting proactive and getting shit done. And cheers to our patrons. And cheers to our patrons. Cheers, guys. I don't know how I feel about this cocktail. It's like it. It's not fizzy enough. And the well, mules aren't supposed to be fizzy, right? Well, it's got ginger beer. Oh, that's right. Okay. It's kind of flat, even though I just opened it, and it tastes funny. 503 cocktails, I don't know about you. Wait, Made in Oregon. I don't know. know. There's a guy with a beard as their logo. I don't like it. I'm not sold. Uh, so White Claw tastes like White Claw, so <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, patrons, thanks for listening, as always. Um, I do actually have an update on your Choose the Bad ring. I got the prototype. Nice. It's a little chunky. It's it's a chunky ring. It's a fat ring. It's a man's ring. Yes. So, I don't know. I like it, but I'm not quite sure if it's exactly the right one, so we're going to go back to the drawing board and try to find a daintier, thinner ring that's more in line with the traditional Choose the Right CTR ring. Right. So anyway, so it's exciting. We're getting there. It's fun. Yeah, it is fun. I'll take a picture of the prototype and I'll send it on out to the Patreon page, and so you guys can see. Yes, sounds like a plan. All right, let's repent. Okay, well, I repent for not getting an abortion when I could have. <laughs> Wish I would have gotten so many abortions. Right. I mean, I'm, you know, lucky enough that I never got pregnant, but. And I know we're in California, so I don't really have to worry about that here, but I'm just, I'm really, I'm so sorry for everybody who now has to deal with these bullshit states like Utah and fucking Arizona and Texas and Louisiana and Alabama. Like, fuck. That's a pretty big list. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was just going to repent for half-assing the episode last week. Listen. When we were all taking COVID tests. We found out our family had COVID. We had to see what was happening. Turned out a lot more people t- <laughs> turned out to have COVID. It was about half and half. Yeah, there you go. So I've miraculously stayed unscathed. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> and I really, really don't want to go to work. So I'm really kind it's of bummed about it. your need to want to not go to work that you're like, fuck it, I just can't get COVID again. Like, you didn't get COVID when I got it in January, which I thought was shocking. So for me, it at least makes sense because I have the antibodies. Yeah. Well, anyways, I guess we all have to go back to our shitty jobs someday. Yeah. <sighs> Boo. Hey, uh, do you know what episode we're on? I think it's 105. 105. Nice. Yeah. Look at me go. Forgot to write it on the sheet here. 105. So luckily we didn't leave our new books in <laughs> Logan uh, that I bought from the from a, a yard sale. 
Oh, I, do you didn't get these at the Deseret Industries? No, I did not. I should. I saw, I sent you pictures of the ones I got at the Deseret Industries that was like understanding the Book of Mormon, which I probably should have bought, but I didn't want to spend the three dollars. Uh, just so you guys know, too, when we so we went on this little vacation back to Zion. We packed a lot of shit, like way more shit than we needed to. We thought we might have some photo shoots. We had a lot of shoes. Had a right. whole suitcase full of shoes. <laughs> Anyways, we had a lot of shit. Coming back, Charlotte managed to <laughs> fit something in every available space that was possible. Like any air pocket left in any space in the car was filled with either a book about Mormonism, some kind of little statue of Jesus, a painting of Listen, the I got our patrons some gifts, okay? Mandy's sitting there trying to find you the perfect CTR ring. I'm finding you guys actual treasure. And unless you live in Logan, in which case, I'm sorry, you can just go get that any day. Uh, we also stopped at the D- the DI in Cedar City, which is fun for us because there's always fundamentalist yep. Mormons with the long dresses and the braids and stuff. Right. This time did not disappoint either. Of course, of course. Um, I found only one thing. I found more things at the Logan DI than I did at the, the uh, Cedar City one, though. But I did, I did get something good there. Yeah. A lot of profits involved. <laughs> but the best stuff that I found were actually from yard sales. And when I found out these books, like, there's a bunch of books I wanted to get, but I was like, no, I don't, you know, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on books I'll never read. But then she's like, they're 25 cents. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so. Did you say sweet deal? I'm sold. <laughs> you know what I love? A sweet deal. So the one I thought was going to be great is inspiring stories for young Latter-day Saints. And, you know, I... Well, I was reading through it. They're really boring and not, I can't even make fun of them because they're just stupid. It's like little short stories. Here, I'll I'll summarize the one that Charlotte gave me as a, should we do this on Mormon Corner today on the podcast? It was, there was a young kid in this country. He had a disease His eye and his eyes could not see. His mother took him to the prophet. They gave him a blessing. His eyes could see. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, but the other book that I got that I knew was going to be just pure trash, and I was very excited about it, is called... Between Husband and Wife, <laughs> Gospel Perspectives on Marital Intimacy. Uh, what does the cover look like? Describe it in detail. <sighs> okay, it's one of those white flowers. What do you call those? Calla lily. Calla lilies, which could be a labia. <laughs> I mean, if you tr- if your imagination is... Uh, it's okay fish. <laughs> there you go. Um, and then I was trying to find something to read to you, but then I was on Twitter and I was just arguing with all those fucking pro-life motherfuckers. Um, but I will read you the in the the sleeve. Is that what you call mm-hmm. it? Mm-hmm. Uh, which I only read a little bit of. So if it gets boring, I apologize. I really didn't read this in advance, but I have to assume it's going to be pure gold. <laughs> Between husband and wife. Gospel perspectives on marital intimacy. Marriage. As ordained by the loving Father in heaven, brings two souls together on a path towards his presence. And the special intimacy that can exist between a righteous husband and wife serves to ennoble uh, and enhance their union. But for too many, intimacy can become a source of guilt, frustration, and even conflict. I wonder fucking why. Right? (laughs) Because you're not allowed to think about sex or even contemplate sex until you're married, Mandy, which should be when you're 12. (laughs) President Spencer W. Kimball stated... If you study the divorces, as we have had to do in the past years, you'll find that there are many reasons. Generally, sex is the first. Is the first. They did not get along sexually. I don't ever want to think of President Spencer Kimball talking about getting along sexually with anybody. Well, also, can you imagine, like, you're just, you're 18 and you're marrying some dude from your church. You don't Barely know. hang out with each other. Yeah, you don't know each other. You've never obviously had sex and probably not much more than that you yeah. held hand at a movie once yeah it turns out you're not compatible weird right. so strange um though they may not say that in court they may not even tell that to their attorneys but that is the reason <laughs> <laughs> so generally sex is the first reason why people get divorced because they didn't get along sexually but God knows, they're not going to tell anybody about it. They'll just know it's their dirty little secret. Embarrassing. 
Where does a church member go for guidance when faced with questions on the subject? Where can a young man or woman contemplating marriage turn for a clear, gospel-based understanding of intimacy? What medical insights are available for middle-aged and older LDS couples who want to improve or revitalize this aspect of their relationship? Continued on other flap. Drawing, <laughs> drawing upon their years of experience, teaching, counsel, and writing on the subject, Professor Brindley and Dr. Lamb have gathered teachings and testimonies of the modern prophets Thing, and united them with current medical research, Viagra, to offer valuable and straightforward responses to these questions. The result is a wonderful source for married and or engaged couples who are seeking a simple and consistent gospel-based discussion of intimacy. Ooh, so we have that to look forward to. You're welcome. Uh, th- this kind of reminds me of, uh, th- there was something was, that got posted in one of the ex-Mormon groups I think it was a screen grab from from another group, but it was basically like this outlining of an exercise that the Relief Society did, and it was like they were all the women were told to bring a pair of their husband's shoes, and they didn't know why. And then it turns out, you know, they all put on their husband's shoes, and they 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 put their feet in the middle of the circle, and they take pictures of them in their shoes. And the lesson is just it's like. Now, don't you see that your your stinky old husband's dirty boots are too big for you? You don't want to walk in his shoes. Let him take the worry. Let him right. take the responsibility. <laughs> you know, you just be a good little wife and don't ever try to wear your husband's shoes because they don't fit you. You know, it's too much responsibility right. for you. Right. <laughs> and I read that and I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. And also, I'm so triggered by this. Why right? am I so triggered? Oh, it's so because you're just a little woman, Mandy. Uh, you can't take... You can't... Oh, I was going to say we'll go straight into this motherfucker. Um, <laughs> Mandy had me watch Web of Lies or Web of Make-Believe or... Oh, yeah, the, the Web of Make-Believe. Right. And so we'll probably talk about this a little bit later, but one of the things was talking about this Nazi bitch who, you know, got into being a fucking white supremacist because her boyfriend did, and she just, she even said, there's something nice about just going along with it, and that nothing was really my fault because I was just meant to sit there and be quiet and go along with whatever he had decided, so I didn't have to make any of those decisions. And, you know, she's now, she testified against these people and, and all these things, and, you know, has come to light, but at the end of the day, you know... I guess women will turn a blind eye to fucking horrendous things if it means they don't have to make a decision about something. People want that for themselves. I think it's, I think, I think feminism was born of this idea. So feminism kind of grew up in the 70s, so we haven't really experienced a world before that. But, right. But that was always the place of a woman was to have no power. You know, like obviously going back a few years earlier than that, you couldn't even vote. Right. So I think that that's so you couldn't just... get a credit card. You couldn't buy a house. Right. If you didn't have a husband, if you were unfortunate enough to not be able to land yourself a husband, you had to have your father sign off on it. Right. So I think that um, I, I feel very lucky to have been born in the time that I have now. But I also can't imagine how this is the society that you're born into. And I'm only saying that because of being born into the Mormon faith and having that be the guidance that I was given and the teaching that I was given as a kid up until for some reason, and I still don't know what it is, and I just thank my lucky stars to this day that I had some sort of influence to be like, this is fucked up. <laughs> right, right. I'm not somebody's maid or, or chef or I don't, I don't want to do your fucking laundry and I don't want to have your kids and I don't want to not wear your shoes because they're too big for me. You know, right. I'm in fucking charge here. Right, right Turns right. out. I'm very bossy. Right. <laughs> no, you? And I'm not a good woman to a man. No. I just, I like to do my own thing. Exactly. And if you want to come around and come along, sure. Cool. But I'm not subservient to you. Like, I always made the joke, and I say this joke in parentheses because there is a part of me that really wanted to marry someone for money. Because I really don't want to work. Yeah. Like, ever. So the thought of being a kept woman was nice. But I, it would never work. I've never won even, I don't think I've even dated anybody with money. So, like, that was never a thing. (laughs) But even if they did, them having that money over you would give them a certain amount of control over you. And frankly, I would have never allowed that. All the control. Right. Because it's like honey, I need to buy some groceries or whatever. Or even if you had the power, let's just say, let's say you, you, 
you had access to the bank accounts and you were able to go buy what you want, still, they would still be a little bit over you that says you couldn't do some shit because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're not the one making the decisions because you you don't have the power because yeah. you don't have the money. Yeah. Yeah, that show, I actually had put that show under cool shit on my list. Uh, okay. It's on Netflix. It's called The Web of Make Believe. And there's a few different episodes about unrelated things. The only, the tie is that they're, they're all, uh, Internet related, internet conspiracy related. That Nazi one was really good. That was really a really good one because yeah, it wasn't just the Nazis. It was also so showing, pretty blatantly, like Trump ignited the the you know white supremacists to feel like they had a voice again. Oh yeah, totally. And it's just like for those who don't see that connection, it's like you're just not looking. Then yeah, you're willfully turning a blind eye. Right. Yeah, that was great. There was one about. Um, uh, the, what do they call it? The stingray. Basically that guy who was defrauding the IRS by filing, uh, tax returns for dead people and getting oh, right. away with it and getting a lot of money and they illegally surveilled him and he won right. the case, uh, well, representing actually, no, himself. <laughs> he didn't win, but because they had grounds to probably reopen the case or to try it again, yeah. Then they're like, no, 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 we'll just let you go. But like, he should have been in prison a very long time, right, and right, he right. wasn't. And he could have actually gotten off a lot sooner. But he's like, no, I'm going to stay in prison and finish this out. But yeah, it's it's freaky. it was a good it was a good show. It was definitely worth watching. Good stories for sure. I have that, and I also have um, because there's so much of this motherfucker. I did want to give two shout outs for cool things. Benchmade knives. Uh, our dad works at a sporting goods store, and he got, gave me a, a knife, a little pocket knife, because I'd been bugging him about what the best type of knives were. Um, and my sister, Tiffany, had wanted to buy something for her boyfriend. And so dad's like, oh, yeah, get these Benchmade knives. And it's this tiny little, um, the one I got is called the Bug Out. It weighs like 1.8 ounces. It's practically, I can put it under my boob without a bra on. And, it, you know, if I did this the other day, I was just like, I'm going to Target. I'm taking my knife. <laughs> but I didn't want to wear a bra. So I just popped it right there under my boob. And it's like, you can't even feel that it's there. It's sharp as fuck. And it's really strong. It's like under four, in the blade's under four inches. But anyways, mm. I, I, I've been doing a lot of knife shopping for the past couple of years. And I'm really glad that I got this one. It's pretty cool. That's so awesome. So if you're ever in the market for a utility pocket knife, camping knife, whatever, Benchmade makes a really good knife. And the other thing uh, is I blatantly copied my sister Tiffany and purchased a pair of earrings <laughs> from an Etsy designer called Mostly Sweet Jewelry. And this is another thing it's where... It's spelled just like Mostly yeah, Sweet. Yeah, Mostly okay. Sweet. I've been on the hunt for a pair of uh, like genuine silver earrings that will... like, And I don't mind spending a lot of money on it if it's something that I only have to buy once. Like... I'm tired of buying the stainless steel Claire's, you know, big hoops that you have to replace every two months because they start, you know, tarnishing or whatever. So I've been looking, I've been looking, I've been on Amazon, I've been at department stores, and it's always like silver plated or, you know, uh, sterling silver or whatever. So finally, when I saw her earrings that she was wearing, they're the perfect size. These ones are called Extra Giant. I think they're a, <laughs> what, four inch diameter, right. five inch diameter. Yeah. They're hammered silver. They're pure silver, and they have a clasp that makes them virtually impossible to lose because they're they're expensive. It was like a hundred bucks for a pair of earrings, okay. but now I never have to worry. I mean, knock on wood, I never have to buy another pair of earrings like this again in my life because these are exactly what I want, exactly oh, nice. what I wear, and they're good quality and they're made of silver. Well, so that's awesome. If anyone's in the market? Because I I literally no joke been ten years been searching for the perfect pair of. 100% genuine silver. No, that's true. When we were at um, Magic Mountain a few months back in October, you thought, we, were, me and Mandy were sitting next to each other on a roller coaster, and she thought she'd lost one of her hoop earrings, and she was pissed. And I was like, ah, that sucks to suck, you know. Yeah. It's a roller coaster. What do you do? And you were not letting it go. Like, <laughs> no, I've got to find it. That You all understand, I, these are the only earrings I wear because I can't find another pair of them. I'm like, whatever. And I left, and then she stayed behind and actually found it stuck. <laughs> Where was it? Like by the feet? It or? was, so the, the seats are connected to the block, which is on the track. It was on the block. Which is weird, because we did upside down, right? Yeah. I yeah. don't know how it stayed there. The force of inertia right. kept it where it was. But yeah, I got that earring back. <laughs> so now I have two pairs of earrings. Nice. <laughs> but this one is substantially more 
uh, silver than the other ones. Those right. ones are pretty light and obviously. Maybe I need to buy some they're, too. They're really great. Mostly <laughs> sweet on Etsy. That we all three of us can match. <laughs> like we don't already. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's get into it. This motherfucker. We're at 20 minutes now. So. Well, prepare yourself for at least 40 more because, god damn it. <laughs> Here's the thing. So, obviously, the big top. So, it's what, Saturday? The big thing on everybody's mind is yesterday. It was just yesterday, right? But yeah. Yesterday's just yesterday. uh, the Supreme Court struck down Roe versus Wade, basically opening the door to allow states to criminalize abortion. Everybody knew this was coming. It's not a surprise because somebody on the Supreme Court, one of the three liberal judges left, uh, leaked it. So everybody knew it was going to happen. Now it's actually officially happened. Right. Questions. (laughs) (laughs) One, if you, they declared under oath that they said that this was decided law. How is this not perjury and can they be removed? But there is no... For the Supreme Court, there is no code of ethics, so they're actually not held to any sort of standard, which is complete and utter fucking bullshit. The whole Clarence Thomas and his wife thing—he was—he was deciding on on cases that were coming forth over the January sixth commission when he should have recused himself because his wife was involved, but he didn't have to do it because there's no code of ethics. Um, but I just I can't understand one how an illegitimate president was able to put three Supreme Court justices on the stand, which are now overturning everyone's rights because it's not going to just stop with abortion. Next is going to be contraceptives and same-sex marriage. And then who knows, um, some asshole from, I want to say Texas, some GOP member was saying, now let's look at um, Brown versus the edu- Brown education, mm-hmm. something like which is segregation. Mm-hmm. Like they're trying to repeal fucking segregation. Well, that's that's far down the line, but that's th- this basically opens the door and just scratches the surface of this plan that conservatives have to, yeah, basically get rid of any amount of progress that's been made over the last hundred years or whatever. Right. And let's not forget that two of these justices have pretty credible sexual assault allegations right. against them. Right. One of them was uh, is married to somebody who was openly involved in trying to overthrow the U.S. government. Right. You know, it's it's like it's unbelievable. We've talked a little bit about the Supreme Court before, and honestly, I don't know too much about it, but uh, about the idea of expanding the Supreme Court, which right. Erica talked about when she was a, a right. guest on our show. There's 13 cir- court circuits, mm-hmm. so expand the judges to 13 judges. Right. And for some reason, the President Biden has been very vocal about that's not something he's interested in doing, which doesn't make any sense to which me. Which means we all need to to write our Congress people and demand that they, they, they make it happen because nothing gets done unless we demand it. Yeah. I saw an interesting meme that kind of um, laid out the, the timeline of, oh, right. of what basically, or, or how this plan was supposed to potentially happen and it's yeah it starts out with roe v wade then it's like outlaw plan b right and it's ban contraception then it's a federal ban on abortion then it's banning gay marriage then it's anti-sodomy laws then it's repealing women's right to vote then it's banning interracial marriage the return of jim crow and the return of slavery right right which i mean everyone's like oh they're not gonna do that it's like literally someone said to me like they're not going to be overturning you know, segregation. I was like, they said the same thing about fucking Roe versus Wade. Look us, look at us now. And then somebody tried saying the Democrats did this. And I'm like, I don't know what kind of gaslighting shit you're trying to pull here, but I'm not fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was Terry's uh, sister's husband. And I'm just like, bitch, I don't even know who, well, how you're on my Facebook friend list for one. Yeah. It's but fucked up. for those who are like, I just don't understand how so many people are upset about, you know, not being able to murder babies. And it's like, For one, that's so misguided and so fucking wrong. But that's not all that Roe versus Wade does. It's not even about, I mean, it is, you know, woman's right to choose. If she has an unwanted pregnancy, she can get rid of it. But it's also, here's a list of things that Roe versus Wade protected and now no longer do. C-sections. Treatment for PCOS. What's PCOS? I have that. It's um, polycystic ovarian syndrome. Right. So treatments for that. Treatments for endometriosis. Egg and sperm transplants. Surgery for stillbirths. Home therapy for men with low sperm count. 
hormone therapy for any person who is pregnant, having issues, or need extra estrogen, access to condoms and birth control, miscarriage, egg transplants for anyone under the age of 10 who became pregnant as a result of rape, surgery for when a fetus forms outside the uterus, protection for mothers who suffer a miscarriage due to an accident outside of their control or if their body simply can't sustain a pregnancy, discrimination protection for anyone who is disabled and is pregnant and wants to be and or wants to become pregnant uh, discrimination policy protection for any POC who becomes pregnant mm -hmm. protection in the event of a person deciding to get their tubes tied protection against any medical profession all who oh, from stealing your organs while you give birth that so uh, you don't have protections against a medical profession who professional who can steal your organs while giving birth mm -hmm. uh, sexual enhancement drugs such as Vi viagra and any form of fetal surgery well and you know there's a million other reasons too but what it really what roe v wade really basically the the meat of that argument was that you don't get to decide what another person is allowed to do with their body right bodily autonomy is guaranteed to each one of us if I choose to do something with my body that pisses you off, shut the fuck up about it because it's not your body. Right. That's all that it really, that really entails. And the fact that you could be so blinded and so privileged to think that this could never potentially affect you. Right. Because all you see is people murdering healthy white babies. Right. I'm sorry, but white babies. Right. That's all they care about. That's all they care about then you're you're a fucking idiot right and you're gonna it's gonna be a hard day for you when that comes and slaps you in the face and you're like oh i was wrong turns out maybe you know i shouldn't have been so self-centered and and right because at the end of the day you don't like abortion don't have a fucking abortion right, exactly. right? but the, we i think we talked about this in the past too like w when does it stop now all of a sudden if somebody who needs a liver transplant can now just take your organs because you're a match yeah like how does w when does it where, when's enough enough? There's a lot of dystopian future stories and novels and shows that give you an idea of what that could potentially look like. And I don't know. It's just, it's maddening to think that everyone's just like, yay, the white babies are saved. Right. It, when that's not what this is about. But I can see those same people who are going like, oh, you're, you know, you're tearing babies' limbs apart as you're aborting them. How could you want to do that sort of thing? Be the same people who say, well, when you die... You have no choice but to give your organs to science. But not to science, because clearly, fuck science. But, you know, to the rich white man who needs his fucking heart transplant or yep. whatever it may be. Yep, yep. Well, we, we've talked about this before. Like like I said, this is nothing surprising. It's angering. It's fucking frustrating. But we knew it was going to happen. We've all known it's been going to happen for... We've been talking about this for, what, the past year now? Right. So, that being said... I think maybe the thing to really focus on at this point, and I have legitimately been getting a lot of messages on social media, or at least our Bad Mormons account has been getting a lot. Um, like, what do we do? I'm so frustrated. I'm so lost. I'm so, you know, I'm stuck. I'm helpless. Right. What could we possibly do? And it's a valid question. Right. Because it's like, you, you're just one person. You know, you may be living in a blue state. You may be living in a red state. You may be living in a district that's, you know, purple, whatever. Don't forget, and this is easy to to forget when you're thinking about politics in general, is you feel so helpless because you only have that one vote. Don't forget to focus your attention inward locally to your own community. Like, do what you can do to be a positive influence and be the change that you want to see uh, in your local community and show up and protest and sh uh, write letters and get involved and if you're really passionate about it uh run for something and there's a whole i'll actually post this on our social media i've posted it before but there's a whole um organization that's devoted to helping people get uh motivated and jump through the hoops that they need to jump through to be able to run for different positions in their within their districts that's how people like fucking Marjorie Taylor Greene and Madison Cawthorn and Lauren Bobart. That's how these people get elected is because they're pushed. They have no qualifications. They're pushed by people who have money and they need a, you know, cute young face to like push their agenda. So those are some options. Uh, I do want to point out that if you do decide to protest, this has been incredibly frustrating 
uh, watching the Black Lives Matter protests. We, we're seeing the same thing happen again yesterday in Arizona. When groups, uh, large groups of people get pissed off and they go out in large numbers to protest, the, <laughs> the evildoers and the fascists and the MAGAs and the whatever, it's mainly the cops, what the, whatever the fuck you want to call them, the cops, the, 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 the racists. Off, 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 off duty cops. Yeah. They'll go out and they'll start committing acts of violence and they'll start, that white umbrella guy or whatever, the guy with the umbrella. I, would, I said the same thing when I was telling my story about being involved in the um, protests in Seattle. Like you get a small group of people who come through and start chaos and that basically gives the green light to start firing tear gas, to start rubber bulleting people, to start handcuffing people. And it's going to happen no matter. It, it, it's in Arizona, you see mothers and daughters and all these women peacefully protesting. And a lot of teenagers. Teenagers. And then, you know, you have that one person who they're going to call Antifa. Right. Or they're going to say it's the left or whatever, like they always fucking do. That one person who's a plant that they need to start basically treating the crowd with violence. And so there's a couple of different techniques that people have been told to do. Like you're supposed to stop what you're doing, just get on the ground, sit down on the ground and like curl up like a bear. <laughs> or like right. you're being attacked by a bear or whatever. Um, uh, obviously you don't want to participate or you don't want to respond to any of that violence. Uh, but if you do decide to go out and protest, which I honestly think everybody should, there are some tips and tricks that you can that you should know walking into it. Just remember, don't bring your phone to a protest. If you want to record and you want to take videos, get a burner phone or get some get a device that you can uh, take videos Something on. Something that can't be linked back to they you. They can't be linked back to you. You Everybody, this may, may be, sounds like a conspiracy theory, but I think in, in this day and age, everybody knows that your phone is being tracked. Right. Anybody that wants to track you can track you by your phone. Go and watch that uh, documentary we told you about on Netflix earlier. The, right. the web of make-believe. Right. Um, so don't bring your phone with you. And you're going to need to write down uh, at least one phone number of somebody that you can contact should you be arrested. Probably a good idea to write the phone number of a lawyer. You can use Sharpie, which can tend to wipe off. Uh, so you can use Sharpie or you can use, um, there's a lot of people are doing it with uh, the removable tattoo ink now, the ink box, you oh, know, those kind of yeah, temporary yeah, yeah. tattoos because those stay on a lot longer. So make sure to ink that somewhere on your body. Uh, make sure that you bring shatterproof swim goggles or safety goggles or, or something of that nature have a bandana or a gas mask if you can because they're going to fire tear gas at you they they always do they always will if you can have a traffic cone if you see anything nearby uh that's that you could basically cover a tear gas canister with right do that because you'll be saving a lot of people from inhaling that or getting those harsh chemicals on their skin or in their eyes. If you wear contact lenses, take them out. Wear glasses. Right. Uh, make sure to have water with you. Make sure to wear, don't wear oil-based stuff on your skin. Sunscreens, lotions, things like that, because that the chemicals from the tear gas will attach to your skin. Oh, okay, yeah. So try to use water-based and just be really mindful of everybody around you. Go with somebody. Don't go by yourself. Right. And uh, there's a lot of other rules, too. I'll post a, you know, um, Amnesty International International does a really good infographic. So I'll post that on our social media. Um, I, I feel like I'm too old to go out there and protest anymore because I've seen what happens and I know what happens. And I honestly don't want to put my old bones in danger of it. But when I was young, I would have, and I was absolutely out there in the middle of it. And I think people should be, but I just think you should go into it aware um, and if you're not, if you don't have tactical gear and if you don't have, if you're at a disadvantage because you don't have those things that they're going to have against you, just maybe look into it before you go to a protest and get what you need. Learn how to get out of a zip tie handcuff right. with a bobby pin. You know, like you're, these are things you're going to want to know how to do. So just take a little time to prepare to yeah. before you go out there. No, that makes sense. I, good idea about the bobby pin. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, they, they don't have enough handcuffs for everybody. So that bobby pin will get you out of a zip tie. You Pretty just easily. Just run. Like. <laughs> Pretty easily. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something else to think about uh, with the whole abortion thing, that if you are going to travel to another state to have an abortion, if, you're, if your state has shut it down and you need, you need this medical care and you're going to another state... Um, Make sure that you delete all of your period cycle apps off of your phone. Don't even take your phone to the state that you're going to because, again, you're 
being tracked essentially uh don't tell anybody why you're why you're going to another state clearly you know especially not over texts or apps um don't tell anybody where the state that you're actually going to um what was the other one was yeah, turn off your phone, use written directions or a burner phone. Do not use the burner phone to open any of your personal apps. Oh, yeah, big mistake. Right? Uh, only use cash while you're purchasing anything in the other states uh, while you're on your trip because you want to leave no paper trail. So your vacation, in parentheses, <laughs> photos, take vacation photos to post later. Be cautious of geotags. Only post screenshots of the original photos. So, um, you know, some people might say this is being extra or overly precautious, but this is really the reality that we're facing right now. People have been imprisoned with murder charges in certain states, some for literal miscarriages. So women who had a miscarriage completely out of their own, maybe they even wanted the baby, could be charged with murder because their body couldn't sustain it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're a person who ends up in the situation, the state can and will use your data against you as evidence in court. So don't leave a paper trail. If they take, uh, if you want to take uh, treats, what, what? if they want to treat us like criminals, we're going to move like criminals kind right. of thing. So anyway, so yeah, fuck, fuck all that. And if you're arrested... This is another thing. I, there was actually a few rulings that came down from the Supreme Court that I wanted to talk about. I don't know that we'll have enough time. Um, if you are arrested, uh, the Supreme Court just basically shut down the Miranda rights law. So <laughs> fucked up. So, you know, everybody knows that's ever seen a TV show. When you get arrested, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and, be, you can and will be used against you in a court of law. It's not... They didn't completely take that away. However, they... That was a big motivator for cops not to squeeze false confessions out of people and be, get information from people that they could not use in court. Right. And it gave the the person who was arrested the ability to sue. For example, like if you say like you say you get arrested, they the cops you know coerce a false confession out of you, which seems like oh how could they possibly do that? They it do it all the time. A lot. It happens. They wear you down until mm -hmm. you just want... And then they trick you, too. Like you've been in there for 10 hours. You haven't eaten. You haven't slept. You want to go 20 go hours. Home. And then all of a sudden, they start saying things in a certain way that you're like, oh, well, maybe. And they're like, fuck, no. That's yeah. not accurate at all. Right. So they get a confession out of you. Say you go to jail. Say you're in jail for 10 years of your life. And then DNA evidence comes back and proves you innocent. And they have to let you go, right? If they hadn't read you your Miranda rights, you have a a case against them and you can sue and be awarded damages for that 10 years you spent in prison. So just like everything else, this, this Supreme court ruling didn't effectively take that away, but it's just starting to chip away at the protections that we had. So now that you can't sue police for not giving you your Miranda rights. So you still have the right to not talk to the police until you have a lawyer. They're just not making you aware of it. Yeah, they're not telling you. So that was some other bullshit to come out of the Supreme so Court. Up. Anyways, should you be arrested, you have the right to remain silent. Even if you're 100% innocent, don't feel like, oh, well, if, if me being quiet makes me look guilty, who gives a shit? Do not say anything, especially except, if you're innocent. Except for I want a lawyer. Yeah, that's I, I'm not talking until I have a lawyer. And I, I have a feeling that most of the people who listen to this show already know that. But maybe spread not. that word. Yeah, spread, tell everybody you know. We're telling you to tell everybody because, you know, word of mouth is harder to track than text. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> so don't talk to the cops. Stay silent. Be aware of DNA harvesting. This is another thing that oh, sounds right. super fucking, like, futuristic and ha nobody would ever do this. If they offer you a drink of water, you no. just personally basically done the same thing as signed a form saying you can go ahead and have my dna right so be aware of that th th any trash that you throw away any sip that you take off of anything can potentially be used to harvest your dna um and you know i think the main thing is like we said don't bring your phone right and then lastly and this is also extreme. So for people who are older like ourselves who might not be going out protesting, and who knows, I might still go out and protest. It depends on where, where we fucking land with this shit. But um, if you're older and don't want to protest, the very least you can do is go um, and fight to expand the court to 13. We kind of talked about this a little bit. Uh, contact your elected officials in Congress and urge them to bring the judiciary... Ugh, I can't talk. The judiciary... Judiciary. 
judiciary. <laughs> <laughs> Is this charcuterie all over again? <laughs> it's a whore. I'll say it for you. Okay, thanks. Here judiciary. <laughs> judiciary. <laughs> You just read this. I don't know how we're going to cut back in from that. (laughs) All right. Uh, If you, like the 75% of Americans, are dissatisfied with the Supreme Court, there are things you can do to take action. First, get involved in the fight to expand the court. Contact your elected officials in Congress and urge them to bring the Judiciary Act of 2021, which would add four seats, taking the size of the court from nine to 13 justices to match the number of circuit courts on the floor. Uh, You can learn more about expanding the court at takebackthecourt.today. The Supreme Court is the only court in the entire country that does not implement a code of ethics for its judges. The Supreme Court justices are given lifetime positions and are not held to any standards. This has got to change. Urge your elected officials in Congress to support the Judicial Ethics and Anti-Corruption Act. There you go. Right, thanks. Do that. (laughs) You can't speak and my eyes don't work. Listen, these white claws are kicking my ass. I'm just kidding. I just can't speak or read. I never learned how to read. Uh, There's another thing that came out of the Supreme Court that basically, again, it's not a huge impactful ruling, but it started to etch away the division of church and state. It started to blur that line a little bit. Right. Where now you can use taxpayer funds to essentially send kids to private schools that are religious run schools. I don't understand how that works. Like, what's the reasoning behind that? Like, how did... Well, the, the ruling comes from a couple in rural Maine that wants to send their kids to some kind of, you know, they, there's no public schools out there. So they're, they're getting these grants or whatever, uh, scholarships, essentially, whatever, to send their kids to school. And they want to send them to this school that they choose, some Catholic school or whatever kind of religious school. And they weren't allowed to use the funds for that because, of the, because it's taxpayer dollars. Right. It's not a privately funded scholarship or anything right. like that. And so... Um, the Supreme Court, this fucked up bullshit Supreme Court, voted in favor of that, saying, yeah, you can use taxpayer dollars to send your kids to a school that essentially, like, promotes bigotry and homophobia. Right. And, you know, that doesn't hire teachers that are gay. And, right. you know, all, all these really problematic things. So it's just, it's, it's again, it's, it's not coming in with a bang. It's right. like just a little scratchy whisper that's just starting to chip away, chip away, chip away. Until now you're down at the end of the line where it's like we've chipped away so much at it that we're, you know, the, I know it's problematic to use the word Taliban, so I'm really trying consciously not to, but the, what what are we calling it? The white Christian nationalists? Right. Pretty much. I also want to point out in Syrian law, I can still have an abortion <laughs> up to like 12 weeks. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we have less rights than a fucking Syrian law, like fucking Afghanistan, like, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. So yeah, it's it's happening and it's it's well they frustrating. The, the whole thing with gun laws, right? They keep saying like, oh, it's a slippery slope. You do one gun law, you know, all of a sudden, next thing you know, we don't have any guns anymore. But yet, that they don't see the the correlation there with woman's right over her own anatomy. Like, right. what the fuck? Right. Yeah, this is actually a quote uh, from Representative Jim McGovern from Massachusetts, a Democrat from Massachusetts. Um, in response to this Roe v. Wade ruling. He says, you have six justices, five of them who are appointed by Republican presidents who didn't win the majority of votes in the country. You have two of them who face credible sexual assault allegations. One of them's married to a woman who actively participated in activities to overthrow the U.S. government, and they're telling women they no longer have the right to choose. He says, I mean, give me a goddamn break. (laughs) Good for him. And it's just, there's... I don't know. There just seems like there has to be more voting. Voting is clearly what has to happen. Everybody needs this. If this isn't the biggest turnout that there's ever been in the history of ever one, I just don't even know what I'll fucking do. But honestly, I don't even know if that's enough. Like you have to, we have to do something, Mandy. I spent a lot of my formative years being an outlaw and I'm not opposed to going back to that. (laughs) I've practiced a lot and I'll do it in a heartbeat if I have to, because fuck that shit. Right. 
fuck if that the laws shit. are broken, fuck those laws. But also, when the laws are completely unfucking just, again, three of the justices were appo- appointed by fucking Trump. In my opinion, uh, like, I don't know. Like, I really feel like in 2016, he didn't fucking win. I and do that too. It, it's becoming more and more obvious the more he claims that it's a rig election because he didn't win this time. I don't think he won the first time. We just weren't paying attention. Yeah. That, well, I would want to believe that, too. I think there was legitimately the, um, the, the Bernie vote. Yeah. That which, fucked everything. I, you know, I wanted Bernie to I win, I wanted too. Bernie to win. Hillary should have fucking stepped aside, and they cheated. The mm-hmm. D- DNC fucking cheated. And if, as Democrats, we can sit there and look at our own party and see the fucking flaws, I don't understand why Republicans can't do that, too. Well, hopefully they'll start to after this. I hope, I would fucking hope. Um, I'll also, one more thing. I know we're running a little bit long, but I, I also think that the timing of all of these, th- that was a triple hit. Obviously, the Roe v. Wade being the, the biggest of the hits, but the separation of church and state, the gun uh, allowing, uh, right. uh, ba- basically making it unconstitutional for states to make their own rules about concealed carry in right. places, big places like New York City, Los Angeles, and then the Roe v. Wade. I feel like this is, the timing of this is real coincidental considering that the January 6th hearings are right. supposed to be the focus right now. So I I don't know. I, what do I know about shit? I just think it's a very convenient timing for all this to be dropping when and to distract people from paying attention to the poten- that potential... Uh, insurrection and overthrow of the U.S. government that happened by those MAGA hats. Right. And I would hope that it is not... I mean, I can be pissed off about multiple things, <laughs> right? I, I can, can be, be pissed off about a lot of things at the same time. <laughs> I'm pissed the fuck off on all these things. And honestly, I we watched the first January 6th hearing, and it was moving, and it made me cry, and I am not a crier. Um, unfortunately, I haven't really been able to watch much of the other ones because we were in Utah and, you know, on vacation and whatnot. But I actually, as soon as we get off this, we're going to go on YouTube and I'm going to watch the rest of them tonight. Yeah, totally. Um, Okay, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Okay. And then we'll come back and we'll tell a very short story. Sound good? Sounds great. I was was, was like, can it be about Postum? Oh, wait, (laughs) we haven't made that commercial yet. (laughs) And we're back. Welcome back to the podcast. Um, mm, boy, <laughs> boy, that post commercial is going to be great once we make it. You probably heard something about poop. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, I, okay, I have a short story that okay. I want to tell you, and I think I've already told it before, but I got some pretty sad news, uh, from a friend today, one of my oldest childhood friends. Um, and we had a little gang of us that ran the streets of Logan, Utah back in the, <laughs> back in the early eighties. And we were a tight group, you know, a tight little group of people. We had us, we had our, our neighbors across the street, Seth and Aaron and um, Sarah. Sarah. And then yeah. around the corner it was Jamie and Troy. And then all, you know, we obviously had a, had a huge family too. And so we were all within a couple of houses of each other. And uh, I learned that one of our friends, Troy, passed away today. Sad. And it's, it's, it's made me think of all the fun, like, good times we had growing up. Also, it's like when you hear somebody that you've known your whole life, even though, you know, we haven't spoken for a long time. Um, it's that thing when your kids, you know, your memory, what were they calling it? Neuroflexibility. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Our brother-in-law is like a really smart science guy who's t- talking to us about how kids learn differently. But it's like those memories are so much brighter and sharper in your brain from when you were a kid than... As your brain gets brittle. <laughs> Neuroplasticity, that was it. <laughs> your old brain My gets brittle brain. <laughs> gets brittle and forgets shit. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about him and it, like all the time, fun times we used to have as kids. And I mean, we used to, uh, I've told the story about how, you know, we had a big garden that took up half of a city block that kind of connected our house and their house. And we would play war in the back there. And we, you know, we didn't have a fence in our backyard. They had a little fence with a gate. And so we that's how we communicated with each other. We would just go through the garden. And then it was like you'd take an old rotten zucchini and stuff it with plums and tomatoes what? and whatever <laughs> rotten fruit was, like, decaying in the garden. And those would be your bombs. And, you know. It was disgusting. We'd, like, yeah. Well, plus uh, the, I almost called them by their last names, our neighbors across the street, yeah. they had a big garden, right? Like, yeah. I remember they had, like, a, 
you know, you see those farms where they've got the mounds of dirt that are along long rows. Oh yeah, they the definitely had that in the in their very backyard. That was right back from the um, the apartment buildings. Uh-huh. Um, and I was always like, "Who's this?" This and Sarah was like, "Oh, that's our backyard." I'm like, "This is like a farm." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we would always like play Star Wars and stuff. And I remember too. I have this memory of we would always break, be breaking into the church and like, you know. <laughs> Uh, there was an abandoned house next door to ours that always had feral kittens in it for some reason. We were always crawling in there, taking the kittens out. And mom would be like, wait, stop bringing all these kittens. Telling us that the Which mom. Which is hilarious now, considering her <laughs> right? and her feral kittens. <laughs> telling us that the mom would eat the kittens if we touched them and stuff like that, that I always believed. Wow. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I was, uh, well, anyways, we had a, a lot of times, a lot of fun times growing up. I, I remember talking to him too when, uh, cause we kind of like went through puberty together at the same time. We were the same age. And I, when I went through puberty, I just immediately got really fat. Yeah. And like, that's just the, what my body did. And right. I remember like having this heart to heart, earnest talk with him. And he was like, are you okay? What's wrong with you? What's, oh, no. What's happened to you? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> But it was like you were just kids, so you didn't. You right. Know, there was no like stigma. And God forbid to the, it. the Mormons aren't going to tell you about oh, puberty. Yeah. God no. <laughs> yeah, it was all like a magical mystery. That the I don't know. the Holy Ghost is imparting some fat onto you. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite memory, and this is one that I'm sure I've told before. Um, was a bunch of us, and we were in high school together, and, you know, we'd kind of, like, grown apart in high school. We didn't run with the same circle, but we were all still friends, like, from the neighborhood. Right. And we had this, uh, we were all in debate, and some new friends had come in, you know, the um, Julie and Chrissy and oh, right. Priscilla yep. off the street had kind of come in, and, and we had paid for, or our parents had put money in for us to go on this overnight debate trip to Salt Lake. And the trip was canceled. And a few of us, like, more rebellious, bad, rotten church kids had decided we were going to go to Salt Lake anyway. And we didn't tell our parents that the trip had been canceled. (laughs) And so we ended up going down there. You know, we had cars and stuff. We were in high school. And we took a couple cars. And I don't know how we got a hotel room. Actually, now that I'm saying this out loud, I think I do remember how we got a hotel room. Because one of our friends was had already graduated from high school and was 18. And that's all you oh, needed to right. be. Right, <laughs> so, right, right, and nice. I think we could just pay with cash. Oh, that's convenient. And we had cash because we were selling acid. A lot of acid right, 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 <laughs> right. all through the town. Well, these, these guys weren't. I was. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't see that from the neighbors across no, no, the no. street at all. <laughs> no, that was that was solely me and, like, the older kids. Right. <laughs> and so we got in this hotel room, and I remember um, we had gotten – you could – you could do room service. Well, it wasn't really, really room service, but it was like, you know how you could order like porno channels to your right, room right, or whatever? Right. This hotel had a thing where you could order up. It wasn't a PlayStation. It was a Nintendo right. back then. <laughs> and so we ordered, I remember we had a, a room service Nintendo brought up and we had a bunch of weed. <laughs> and I had never smoked weed with any of, you know, the neighbor kids or anything like that. And, and I really wanted to like, I didn't even like weed that much because I had only taken acid. Right. I mean, it's not that I'd only taken acid, but it was so much more fun than getting right. stoned that I didn't even enjoy getting stoned because I didn't do anything. And so we yeah, were, in comparative, comparative, or yeah, compared to, yeah, go on, sorry. Comparatively. Thank you. I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, <laughs> comparatively, not nearly as much fun. Right. right? And so uh, I remember hotboxing the bathroom and there was a whole bunch of us in there. There were probably like six people in there. Uh, Ryan was one, I won't say his last name, but we're still <laughs> friends on the social media <laughs> and uh, Troy. And I think Seth was there too. Uh, I don't, I don't really, honestly, to this day, it's funny that we were all in the same room at the same time at that point in our lives because we'd gone such different ways. Right. These guys are really smart, you know, and I'm just like, not. Right. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm more of an entrepreneur at this point, <laughs> and they're really book smart. But So we ended up hotboxing this bathroom of our hotel room, and I remember Troy sitting on the edge of the tub, and he's like, I don't really feel anything. I don't think this is doing anything. And I was like, just smoke some more, smoke some more. Yeah, I don't think this is really doing anything. And then he gets quiet for a minute, and he's like, I'm hungry. And then he just falls over backwards <laughs> in the tub. <laughs> and everybody starts laughing. Uh, and that's uh, that's why people don't let me hang out with their kids. 
<laughs> and rightfully so, you heathen. <laughs> yeah, that was so much fun. And that's pretty much all we did. We just played Nintendo, smoked weed, hung out in that hotel room in Salt Lake. Because what are we going to do? We're, we're like 17 years old. Right. 16 years old. <laughs> and, uh... I, I'm not sure exactly how we got found out. Erica was there, too, I'm pretty sure. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how we got found out, but uh, we got a lot of us got pulled out one by one out of debate class when, you know, we got back to school <laughs> over the weekend. And uh, I just remember my, t- my debate teacher, who is uh, Mrs. Dunn, she who's now passed away. She was such a wonderful teacher and, like, such uh, – had so much of an impact on her students' lives – me included, she was like a second mother to all of us. Some of her kids were in the same grades, like my grade and a grade younger. And it was really hard, you know, cause she died of cancer pretty young. Oh. And it was really hard on a lot of people, but she really was like such a great person and a great teacher. But I remember her pulling us out one by one and she was like, just the look on her face was like, you were in big trouble from your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What did you guys do? And, you know, in a loving way, of course. And then our parents found out and we all got in deep shit. (laughs) I might have to get Erica to help me out on that memory because I'm pretty sure she was there. And the only reason I remember her being there is because I remember her getting pulled out of class as well. Oh, right. (laughs) Because it was like, they pulled you out one by one. So you'd watch the face of each kid that would get pulled out in the like, hallway. Ah, like, shit. Oh, Do you get to watch him come back fuck. and look of defeat? Yes. Or, <laughs> yeah, okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Um, I almost forgot. Sorry. You're done with your story. Yes, done. Um, at the top of the show, I wanted to welcome... All of the new listeners from the people who got stickers in your beer that I put out in the Smith's uh, grocery store. You're welcome. I'm so glad you could join us. It's our new marketing technique. <laughs> Mandy gives me a stack of stickers. She's like, here, put these somewhere so, you know, people in Logan can find them. And I'm like, I'll, I don't know. Like, I don't want the wrong people to get them. Who's our target market? Ooh, beer. <laughs> So I just put a stickers in random six packs and cases of beer. So again, if you're one of those people, one, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Email us at fhebadmormons at gmail.com. And then tell us what you thought when you found our, our sticker and what you think of our show. And we can even go over to Apple Podcasts. Leave a review there. Wait, we forgot to be excellent to each other. I wasn't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on. I was just saying that you can go do those things. And then while you're at it, be excellent to one another. <laughs> here's, my, here's my thoughts on being excellent to each other in these dark and troubled times. Fucking vote. Yes. Talk to people. Get other people to vote. Get other people to vote. And don't waste your time on trying to change the mind of a fascist. Right. I spent way too much time doing that. They're not, they have fundamentally different values than you do, and you're not going to be able to reason with them. Don't waste your fucking time. Waste your time and energy on doing something that might actually have a positive impact. I agree. Also, don't give engagement to those fascists right. and those people that are just doing these outrageous things. Marjorie Taylor Greene, I'm looking at you. Right. Screen grab what they've written and then post it into your own new post. Don't reply to them. Don't respond to them. Don't give them any, their algorithm any reason to be put into yours or anybody else's feed. I think those few small steps will go a long way in our communities being more excellent to each other. So to piggyback on that, my friend uh, Suzette actually private messaged me because I've been very vocal on Facebook all day today Mm -hmm. um, because I'm very angry. And she just said, reading your posts and comments, loving every one of them and a bunch of clappy hands, which made me feel really good. But then I said, I just wish they would help those celebrating to see clearer, but I doubt it. And she had said something that, you know, I forget you forget about this a lot is that, you know, they're committed to an ideology of privilege, misogyny, racism, and, and othering. To shift would be ca- catamis- cataclysmic? cataclysmic. Yeah, that's the word. Cataclysmic to their beliefs and values. The importance of your statements is to consistently tell the narcissist no and to shun them. Quite a few 
ghost readers will have their minds open and they will start questioning their thoughts and their friends. So even though the person that you're arguing with that are going back and forth, you're never going to change that person's mind, but there's somebody who's going to be reading that. And it's the same thing with like Yelp reviews, things like that. When somebody goes on and gives me a negative Yelp review, I'm really no longer responding to that person anymore because that, that person's lost to me. They're not invited back to my, my chair or anything like that. But I, I, I respond back to it so anybody reading that review can understand my policies, my thing, and, and what I'm about. So same thing is like you, you're responding to the person you're arguing with, but remember there's a shit ton of people reading it, and the people might change their mind if you do it in a way that's somewhat respectful, mm -hmm. intelligent. Like mm -hmm. don't when, when you've resorted to calling people names, you've generally lost the mm -hmm. argument. I know it's fun to call someone a fucking moron because they're being a fucking moron, but at the end of the day, that's not a good look, and it makes you lose because you lost the intelligent argument that you were having at one point. Yeah, take the emotion out of it. It's hard. It's fucking hard. <laughs> so that's why you're fighting in the first place. <laughs> right. But anyways, that's something to keep in mind. So I, I forget about that, that, you know, remember when you're responding to people that it's not necessarily even for the person you're arguing with. Right. And if you'd like to argue with us, yeah, why don't you head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and a review. <laughs> don't be a, an anonymous pussy, though. Yeah, fuck that shit. <laughs> now check out our website. We're about to actually put some new stuff on there. Yeah. Some of our treasures from our travels. Oh, it's going to be very exciting. Check it out. Of course, uh, send us your stories. We're dying to hear them. And we'd love to have you on our podcast if you send us anything to fhebadmormons at gmail.com. Just like and subscribe to our YouTube. <laughs> right? Right. And Excellent. also become a patron. As little as $3, as much as you want to give us. It's way less than tithing and way more fun than church. And we also have merch. You can find that on our link tree uh, on TeePublic, which is our official merch site. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs>